So you want to get your amateur radio license. Awesome. I will try and help you out with that. My name is Josh Nass. I am call sign KI6NAZ, and I'm an extra class license holder, extra being the top, second being general, and the first level is technician, which if you're watching this, you're likely interested in getting your technician license. Your entrance point into the amateur radio service is a test. Let's just be really clear. The technician license has 35 questions per test. The general has 35 questions and the extra has 50 questions. As you go up through the list of tests, the questions get harder. You have to pass with a 74% correct answer rate. Let's take the technician as an example of this. The technician question pool is broken up into 10 sub elements. They will pull a couple of questions from each sub element to add into that 35 question pool. It's a big old question pool that they then pare down to the 35 questions that you see on the test. The test is all multiple choice and it is witnessed by at least three volunteer examiners. The VEs as we call them are coordinated or organized under a VEC, Volunteer Examination Coordinator. On the ham radio crash course we are most affiliated with GLARG. That stands for the Greater Los Angeles Amateur Radio Group. There are a group of VEs that are affiliated with the Ham Radio Crash Course, and we coordinate doing online testing on our Discord. The link is in the description. To help make all of this easier, I'm going to link to a wiki article for the Ham Radio Crash Course. People who are interested in taking their test go to hashtag testing das questions. It's one of the chat rooms in the HRCC Discord. That is the way to work with the HRCC volunteer examiners, but you can take a test with any volunteer examiner group and a really easy way to find upcoming testing sessions is to go to hamstudy.org forward slash sessions. You can also Google ARRL find a club to find a local club for you. You just enter in your geographic area using your zip code. You can ask that club if they have testing sessions coming up or really just go to one of their meetings and hopefully find a good club. You can also go to the ARRL's website for finding a local test session. They also do that as well. I'll provide links to all these in the description to make this easier for you. But let's say you end up deciding, I'm going to go take the online test. Online tests are done over Zoom or other video conference platforms and using a software title called Exam Tools. Exam Tools is developed by the same people who provide you hamstudy.org. It is a fantastic tool set that pretty much all the VECs use as their online testing platform. Exam Tools allows you in your home to take the multiple choice tests, get an immediate result, and help all the VEs out by keeping everything digital to be able to send off to the FCC. If you do this online, you will get your test results immediately, and if you pass, your FCC documentation will get processed much faster than those that do it in person. If you want your amateur radio license right now, as soon as possible, the best thing you can do is test online. All right, so you're ready to take your test. You've discussed it with a VE. You've set up a testing session, whether in person or online. What do you have to bring with you or have available when you take your test. You will need some form of photo identification. It is often recommended to use your driver's license or state identification card or a passport. If you are unsure about your ID, contact the volunteer examiners that are going to be proctoring your test. Have some kind of payment, whether it's going to be an online payment to a VE or a physical payment if you're taking a physical test. For online testing with the HRCC VEs, the cost is $10. There are waivers available and most VEs will charge you some amount of money. $10 is kind of an average, although I have seen $15 for those that test in person because they actually are running, you know, test material and providing some things. So the the charge there is kind of an application fee or an administrative fee. This is not the FCC license fee. That will be handled later with the FCC, not with the VEs, just so you're aware when you show up to take your test. You will also need to have a completely filled out 605 form. 
if you created an account at hamstudy.org and filled it out and then took your test with exam tools online, good news, it's already filled out for you. The VEs can just take that information off of hamstudy and fire it off to the FCC, which just makes all of this faster. So again, highly recommended you test online. Now, the next thing you need is an FRN number, which stands for FCC Registration Number. This is basically your unique ID that the FCC provides to you once you create an FCC account. If you are getting a license in the United States for amateur radio, you are going to have to have an FCC account. So have your FRN number in hand before you go take your test. And there is an important caveat here. If you want to use your P.O. box as your home address or your operator address for the FCC to send you messages, letters, etc., you need to have the P.O. box squared away and in your FCC account before you take your exam. And the reason is very simple. The 605 form that gets submitted for you, when it gets coupled with your FRN number, it's going to take whatever address you provided at the time that the VE submitted your 605 and you're passing the ham radio test. If the address that is shown is your personal home address and then you later go update it with a PO box, the history of that account, if someone was so inclined, could go back through your past addresses and find your original address. So if you want to cut through all of that, just have a P.O. box right up front and then just assign that to your FRN account. And that's the only thing that's going to be associated to you, the amateur radio operator. Now, the last two things are optional. You can bring a calculator physically if you're testing in person, but you could also use your calculator app on whatever device you're using if you're online testing and a sheet of scratch paper. It needs to be blank, at least when you start. Remember, if you've been watching my videos that I highly recommend taking the circle and drawing them out for the Ohm's law. For those of you taking the technician exam, you're probably going to get one or two of those questions. So you might as well draw that out right in the beginning and put that on the piece of paper right when you sit down to take the test so you don't forget. All right, what happens after you pass your test? Of course, I have complete confidence in you that you will pass your test because you've been taking hamstudy.org and with the sub elements that you've been having issues with, you've been using my video that I'm linking to the playlist right now. Go watch those videos. I know they will help you out. But once you pass, you need to go to the FCC website and pay the $35 fee for processing your account and basically registering your call sign to your name. Important caveat here, you have 10 days after the VEs have processed your paperwork to pay the $35 fee. If you pass the test and you go home, it's probably best to just knock it out, pay the $35 and be done with it. That way when the VEs send in their application notification that you've passed, then everything will just be smooth sailing and you'll get your call sign very quickly. For those of you that are upgrading from a technician to general or general to extra, you don't have to pay again if it's been within that 10 years within the period of time that you have to re-up your license. So once you've paid these $35, you're pretty much done. The good news is, is that if you are upgrading from technician to general or whatnot, you're pretty much going to be upgraded that day with regards to the FCC database and there will be a link in the description to check your application status or just log into your FRN account at the FCC and you can see what your current privileges are listed as for when you get upgraded from technician to general for example. All right when will you get your license for your new hands? Well the FCC is doing daily batched processing for all new licenses that they're working so if you get your payment in and the VEs have put in their paperwork or their application before 6 p.m. Eastern time, you will get your process done on that day and likely get your license. That, of course, is going to be 3 p.m. Pacific time. So if you have not completed your $35 fee, then it will likely roll into the next day. So just keep that in mind. And if this was an upgrade, meaning technician to general, general to extra, it could be as fast as the same day. Basically, whenever that VE pushes the application change or the notification change, it will happen that day. VEs are generally given one to 10 days of handling time. This is another reason why I recommend you test online. There's nothing against taking it in person. Respect to all VEs that take their time out of their day to help get people licensed. You're, you're doing amazing work. But just sheer logistics, 
everything's digital with an online test. The VEs just simply approve that you passed and push it to the FCC. There's not a whole lot of steps involved. But now with the physical taking of tests, that documentation, that physical documentation of the actual test has to be copied into something electronic, digital, and then fired off. So there's a bit of handling, if you will. So keep that in mind. In the sense of valuing your time, I tried to make this as fast and concise as possible. There is a link in the description to a handy wiki article that will answer all of these questions again for you. If you are ready to take your test, awesome. Good luck. I know you'll do well. If you are just getting started and you kind of wanted to see what it is you got to do, it's really not that hard. The, the test really isn't that difficult, particularly for technicians. But if you are worried and you're kind of just dipping your toe into this, go check out the playlist that I'm linking right now. It will take you to my series of videos that walks through the entire question pool for the technician license exam. And that question pool is good through 2026. So you still have plenty of time to practice. Although I'd encourage you to get started now because we're entering into what is called a high solar cycle, which means our ham radio contacts, particularly on HF, what that radio does over there, is gonna be able to go even further than it normally can. It's a very interesting time for amateur radio. So again, check out my playlist or check out my playlist on Are You New to Ham Radio? Start here. I will be linking that as well. I am so glad, again, that you are interested in amateur radio. I know you will have fun with it. Take your time. It is a marathon, not a sprint. But myself and everyone on my Discord are all there to help. The links to join us on the Discord are available in the description as well. There is no bad time to ask a question, and we try to help everybody with a positive attitude and be inclusive to those starting out the hobby. Until we talk again, 73.